here is J.J. Watt uh, when he was asked about potentially coming back to playing for the Houston Texans. And I'm a very fortunate, lucky man. I got a beautiful wife. I got a beautiful son. I've had 12 great years in this league, and I've, I'm very thankful to have walked away healthy and playing great. Um, I mean, I told D'Amico last year. I said, "Don't call unless you absolutely need it. But if you ever do call, I'll be there." Um, but he knows not to call unless he absolutely needs it. Um, this is the last year I'll tell him that because I'm not going to keep training the way I've been training. But uh, he knows that if he ever truly does need it, I'll be there for him. But I don't anticipate that happening. They got a very good crew. Hmm. Hmm. They didn't need it last year when Will Anderson was hurt in week 15 and 16. Well, you knew they weren't going far. I I think we all were happy with what they did last year, but I don't think any of us thought that they were going to beat the big guns in the AFC, right? Like, we were excited for that That, game against Baltimore, but I think we were talking ourselves into the idea that they could actually pull off the upset. I feel like if D'Amico's going to make the call, he has to have a pretty good feel that this is going to happen. Maybe that is something that over the course of the year we get to October, Early November, there's a couple of injuries and Mm -hmm. they decide to pick up the phone or something like that. But yeah, this is one of those things where there's going to be a ramp up period involved if it actually does happen. I would love to see it happen. I think we all would. And I I do think it's interesting that JJ brought that up. I wonder what it means that he's just putting it out there. I think he means he's serious. Like it, it could be that. It also could be, uh, as some often accuse Lance McCullers of, it, it could be him also just making people remember he's around. Yeah, but it's it's but it's JJ. That's that's a unfair, you know, comp to Lance. Well, yeah, JJ's done more, but <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. No, he's not champion. Like he's not saying. answering the question. Really, he's he's saying like, well, I'd come back if they call me. I think because like he's not coming back till week sixteen at, at like the the earliest he's not coming back. So like if you know if you realize a couple games into the season that your lack of addressing the defensive tackle position was a huge mistake, I don't think JJ Watt showing up in week five to play the remainder of the year. It, it really is Will Anderson, Daniil Hunter, Danico Autry gets hurt in like the last two games of the season. And you're pretty confident you're going on a Super Bowl run. And J.J. Watt's going to come be Superman. Honestly, you might not even need an injury. Like, if they're legit Super Bowl contenders this year, maybe it happens, but... Is J.J. allowed to call D'Amico? Hmm. What do you mean? D'amico, he said, oh. if he ever needs me, he can call me. I get it. Is he, J.J. He allowed to, to call D'Amico to ask, like, hey, can I come back? He can't can invite back? himself to a to ring chase? Is yeah. that beneath him? Does he have to be asked? Yes, I mean, that's I mean, way beneath JJ. Watt. He's in the Ring of Honor. <laughs> yeah, like he's not gonna. He's not gonna. Well, you know, what? I don't know if it's beneath. Like, I think he's within his rights to. I just don't think he would. Well, today the uh, the Although, the Texans are doing some some charity work themselves. They have a golf tournament going on today, and uh, D'Amico Ryan's was just meeting with the media, and he was asked about this. I love to hear JJ saying he's ready. I got, I got his number ready to go just in case we need him. Uh, JJ you know, planning his softball event this past weekend. It was, it was fun to see all the guys. JJ looks good. He's in shape. He's ready to roll. So I may need to make that call. So I'm happy that, the, that, the, that it's open from him. But, uh, you know, JJ is an outstanding player, man. He's been an outstanding player for a long time in this league. And, you know, it's just I'm proud of him for what he's able to do in the community still reaching back and the people that he's touched here in the city of Houston it's outstanding to see the response and all the people that showed up to support him this past Saturday oh so, man really proud of JJ can anyone shut those birds up <laughs> so many birds shut up birds sounds like a nice day outside also what was so funny that everyone was laughing? There must have been something like uh, uproariously like, yeah. in the background. Those, those birds were up to something. That definitely <laughs> feels like a, a were the Nick birds Cas- banging each other. Like <laughs> I, I was thinking, like Nick Casario was probably making a bad joke, and everyone's laughing at him, telling how great he is. Or Cal. It's it's the worst thing that that we in media do. The the awkward, nervous laughter to keep the person talking, mm-hmm. talking. You want that person to feel like they're on a roll, you know? Yeah, you don't it, want them to be uncomfortable yeah. like some of the people at the roast of Tom Brady last night where Drew Bledsoe seemed very uncomfortable up there. 
very uncomfortable. Yeah, it's like it's like how uh, attractive people are funnier. Where <laughs> in everyday life, you just go, <laughs> and then if someone else tells the joke, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it, I get it. Uh, you know if, if jj watt really wanted to uh because he he mentioned how he wants to help the t- team D'Amico mentioned that he's very charitable and he wants to help the community can jj watt play third base oh i mean he's played hockey before he was he was taking hacks at uh that's true at sugarland Big you know guy. who else was taking hacks in sugarland not too long ago joey loperfito mm. that's true he's a big guy he's very good at Deflecting passes. Mm-hmm. He's big, so you so know, def- hot corner. Defensively, can- we feel good. He looks like someone who'd be good at baseball in the late nineties. I was, t- was going to yeah. add that caveat Mark, Mark as well. Mark McGuire. <laughs> yeah, he looks. We're not suggesting he's doing he looks anything. Like Rafael Pun- uh, Palmero. Yeah, yeah, we're just saying. I mean, he's he's got that physique. He's working out. He's mentioned. I'm. You know, in a couple of years, I don't know if I'm going to be working out the way I'm working out. So. Yeah, he's still ready. He's still in game shape. He he's hitting softballs at the celebrity softball yeah. game. They're probably going far. Uh, from the two eight one beneath him? Question mark. He wore a Letterman's jacket. <laughs> That's not nice. Too soon, man. That, I did realize that I was giving JJ Rutt, JJ Watt a lot of credit, which really does show how just kind of like laying low for a while really helped. <laughs> I guess part going to Arizona really helped his. Uh, PR because I forgot. You know what? It's, it, there is no such thing as beneath JJ Watt. He's all. He's all. He was. At least he was this guy who was always trying to. You know. I don't know. I might. Yeah. I don't know. I love. He loved putting his name out there on stuff. So he did. It, it would make sense. This is another text from the four hundred nine. Josh. I don't think JJ will restart his Hall of Fame clock. Ah, uh-uh. that's <laughs> actually the reason to do it. Yep. You're going into the Hall of Fame the same year as Tom Brady. Do you want that? I think everybody would like to have their own special birthday party. You don't want a shared birthday party with someone who's more popular than you. I honestly, I kind of agree with that. Like, I don't want to go in with Tom Brady. Who would? It, it's the weekend's not about you. Sorry. Like, you're already officially not the first Texans Hall of Famer. That honor is going to Andre Johnson. Boom. And you're going to be covered up by Tom Brady the whole weekend. No one's going to care outside of Houston about J.J. Watt going to the Hall of Fame. It just won't matter. Like, it's it's the truth. Yeah, you're right. And it's no disrespect to J.J., but it's it's the greatest football player of all time in Tom Brady, the most accomplished player we've ever seen. He's going to the Hall of Fame. It's going to be a, a – I don't honestly, I'm not – it's going to be gross, like, how much love oh, hang, hang Tom on. Brady gets hang that weekend. Well, no, no, no. I mean, honestly, that three-hour – Rose, oh, three hour, three hour road. Yeah, we're not. We're going to talk about that more tomorrow. It wasn't because long much. enough. The time commitment. I the, might not watch that. I though. mean, there needed to be more. I think it's as long as Oppenheimer. Uh, uh <laughs> it could have been longer. <laughs> I think. I think a little more Nikki Glazer, please. I heard she was very good. She was great. Uh, that's the last part I watched was Nikki Glazer. She did very well. Uh, Kevin Hart. Uh, you know, look, comedy is subjective. I'm not the biggest Kevin Hart fan. I'm not either. I, I, I felt like Kevin Hart was, was... And I don't know what the point on a roast, like who's supposed to be very good at it. He's just he's the the famous headliner that was steering the ship. The MC. Right. Instead, Because yeah. it used to be Jeff Ross who did it. Mm-hmm. Jeff Ross, to his credit, like he came in wearing a uh, O.J. Simpson jersey that had blood on it uh, <laughs> and a glove. So uh, that was interesting. But oh. they had Kevin Hart steering the ship and I, I don't know he, he didn't he didn't seem like he prepped is what i'm trying to say gotcha seemed like he, he just showed he embraced up. The, okay. he embraced the live element of it too yeah much. <laughs> yeah 100 it, it felt like he had no preparation at all before and just come saying like bleep you tom brady like that that was it i was like okay come on you've said that four times now 